Grand Master Chief Kevin Gott. Executive Officer Captain uh, Kevin Zayak. Hello, I'm Greg Baker. I'm the uh, CEO on WASP. I want to welcome folks aboard. I know this is a little bit weird, but uh, uh, normally we do fleet weeks every year. Uh, this year we're unable to do so because of COVID, but what I'd like to do is welcome everybody aboard. Every taxpaying American, this is your ship. This is not our ship. This is the bigger our ship. So welcome aboard. Hopefully you'll learn a lot. I know our folks have had a good time making these videos. Thank you. Good morning. I am Retail Specialist Third Class, Keisha Andrews, and I'm going to be giving you a tour on board USS Wasp. WASP was commissioned in 1989, the first of eight WASP-class amphibious assault ships and the 10th warship to carry its name. Utilizing her impressive command and control suite, flight deck, well deck, and medical capabilities, WASP supports U.S. Marines in combat and provides disaster and medical support around the world. WASP is 41,000 tons, equivalent to over 600 M1A1 tanks. She's 844 feet long, which is more than two football fields. WASP is fully capable of supporting a crew of nearly 1,200 sailors and more than 1,800 Marines. Together, they embody the ship's model of honor, tradition, and excellence. Operating at sea naturally results in its crew building up an appetite. Follow me to the mess next. The ship's enlisted mess decks seat 268 sailors and Marines. Culinary specialists prepare hundreds of meals each day while food service assistants dish out the servings. The crew has other options as well. In the ship's store, they can choose from a wide variety of snacks, drinks, and quick meal options. Profits fund command events, ship tours, and fitness equipment to help boost command morale. Wasp gets its food and supplies by pulling alongside and connecting to other vessels using a span wire for a replenishment at sea or refueling at sea. This ensures the ship is stocked up on necessities in order to stay at sea and complete the mission. Helicopters can also pick up and deliver supplies from nearby ships during a vertical replenishment. The ship offers a 24-hour gym, equal to 10 treadmills, 6 ellipticals, free weights, a selection of resistance machines, and a variety of specialty equipment. At the end of the day, crew members retire to their designated berthings for sleep. WASP has more than 2,500 beds, known as racks, built bunk bed style, 3 to 4 racks high. They have built-in storage space for clothing items and personal belongings. Each personnel is also assigned to one stand-up locker. Earthings also offer showers, sinks, toilets, and a lounging area where you can find personnel watching TV, playing video games, or simply relaxing after a hard day's work. I had a lot of fun showing around today, and I hope you enjoyed this part of the tour. Keep checking back for videos on board USS Watson. Welcome back to USS Wasp. I'm Operations Specialist Second Class Gabriel Buck, and on this special tour, I'm going to take you behind the scenes to some places you wouldn't normally be able to go. Shh, follow me. Wasp has two 16 and a half inch diameter propellers with six blades that are driven by turbines and controlled by main reduction gears. Every underway begins with sailors working in the depths of the ship. Sailors in the engineering department ensure the ship has the necessary propulsion and power to safely get underway. WASP uses two 600 PSI conventional fuel-fired boilers that produce steam which powers the ship. Now that we have seen how to propel and energize the WASP, let's take a look at how we steer the ship. The bridge is responsible for ensuring the safe handling of the ship. Inside the bridge, you will find sailors working together, keeping the WASP on a safe course to ensure its crew effectively executes the mission. The conning officer guides the helmsman, typically a junior sailor, to steer the ship in a specific direction using the helm. The helm, in turn, moves the ship's rudders in order to maneuver the ship. Assisting the helmsman is the lee helmsman, who regulates the ship's speed by adjusting a controller that sends information to the engineers. Engineers then open or close valves attached to turbines that control the flow of steam, causing the ship to speed up or slow down. Whether it is digitally or manually, sailors plot courses and track the ship's position to ensure a safe passage through busy harbors and out into the open ocean. The bridge receives information from the watch standards in the Common Information Center, also known as CIC. That's where I work. Let's go check it out.
The Combat Information Center uses radars and other sensors to gather and quickly disseminate information to the commanding officer, flag officers, and other controlling stations. This information is used to inform decision makers on the best way to proceed when other ships and aircraft are in the vicinity. The Combat Information Center will also provide the Amphibious Air Traffic Control Center, or ATSI, information regarding air-to-surface and air-to-air -air threats to assist the safe control of aircraft. Located directly below the flight deck, air traffic controllers are the eyes in the sky. From ATSI, the Amphibious Air Traffic Control Center, the controllers use a variety of radar displays to monitor and communicate with the ship's aircraft. Gunner 40, checking in. Have you loud and clear? Welcome. They are responsible for talking pilots down to the flight deck, especially when visibility is limited. Their efforts ensure the safe, orderly, and expeditious flow of air traffic. Thank you for visiting the USS Wasp. We hope to see you at a fleet week near you. We run the ship. I mean, down here, make the steam that obviously propels the ship. And we also make the steam that generates electricity on board. And the steam is also what creates the water on board. Without what we do down here, no one else does what they do. You know, like, I always tell everyone that's my second favorite thing to do after shutting down. First favorite thing to do is shutting down, second favorite thing is to light fires. Once you light that fire and you come up, you're bringing everything up, you get 700 on the drum, you come in online. That's rewarding right there, just being like, you know, we did it, we did this, but, you know. You know, and then after that, it's just watching everything and making sure we're not having any kind of casualties, and if we do, to be able to combat that casualty. I mean, once everything's done, once you know, once fires are lit, it's just keep fires lit and answer all bells. The bell is the water from the bridge on how fast we need to go. So they'll send down a bell, and if we need to come up in speed, then we'll need to have more fire to create more steam to go faster. Zero eight eight nine. Or vice versa, if we need to go slower, then we'll have to cut burners as necessary. So when you see a ship pull out, meet a warship foe. Remember faintly, if you can, the men who sail below. Hi, welcome to the USS Wasp. I'm HM2 Carr. And I'm going to show you what our medical team does here on the ship. We work hand in hand with our damage control team uh, to keep our ship safe and ready to go. Let's take a walk and find out. So here on board the WASP, the damage control team and medical a lot of times will work hand in hand with emergency type situations. In the event of an emergency situation, our damage control team is the first to respond. They respond to things like fires and floodings that would endanger our ship and our crew. 
Uh, they will come in first and take care of the situation, make sure the scene is safe, and then allow our medical team to come in and take care of any sailors that need care. or battle dressing station. On board we have four battle dressing stations and during GQ we have medical personnel man up those spaces and provide emergency medical care to that portion of the ship. Main BDS is our most sophisticated BDS and is always ready at a moment's notice in case of an emergency on board. We have two beds so we can run two trauma teams at the same time. We also have crash carts, defibrillators, and other medical equipment designed to save lives. We have first aid boxes throughout the ship as well as mass casualty boxes for more extreme situations. Our medical team dedicates their daily lives to keeping our crew members at their healthiest so that they can keep the ship running smoothly. But we train on a regular basis for any emergencies that may arise. The WASP is staffed with 22 HMs, two providers, and a dentist at all times. When we deploy, we bring on board a fleet surgical team to help with any emergency needs that may come up while we're out at sea. Our medical spaces may look like your typical clinic, but there's a lot more to us than that. Since the WASP's primary job is to take Marines into combat type situations, we have to be prepared for all sorts of emergencies. What most people would see as our sick hall waiting area is actually designed to be a triage space in trauma situations. And the ship comes with six operating rooms, a lab, x-ray room, pharmacy, ICU, and a ward that are all ready for patient care at a moment's notice. When we primarily focus on emergency surgeries, we can perform any surgeries that the surgeon is comfortable with. These surgeries can be performed any time during the day and in some cases any time at night. It is because of these ORs and specialty talents that allow us, the USS Wasp, to be one of the most medical capable ships in the U.S. Navy surface fleet and be called upon at a moment's notice. Thanks for taking time out of your busy day to come on board the Wasp and check out our medical department and our damage control team and see what we're all about here on the ship. Hello, I'm Bosome Petty Officer Second Class Nicholas Cullinan, and I'm here to explain how the USS Wasp conducts an amphibious landing. This is the well deck. It is 266 feet long. That's the length of six standard school buses. The Wasp can carry everything from golf carts to bulk cargo to Humvees. How do we get all of that gear to the beach? It doesn't do much good sitting on a ship. Bosun mates and deck department coordinate and conduct amphibious operations to take all of that gear to the beach. We have amphibious landings. We have various vessels at our disposal to conduct amphibious landings with. We have AAVs. Assault Amphibious Vehicles. We have LCUs, Landing Craft Utility. We have LCACs, Landing Craft Air Cushion. LCACs are remarkable vessels because they can drive on both water and on land. low gear onto the LCACs, they rise up on cushions, and then they depart through the stern gate located at the back of the well deck. Thank you for visiting USS Wasp and thank you for having such an interest in our work. It's been a pleasure hosting you. Hello, 
I'm AB Stream Mazan, Michelangelo Mazan from the USS Wasp. I'm here to show you the hangar bay and the flight deck. Follow me. So this is the hangar bay. We have most of our festivities or any type of ceremony in the hangar bay. This is also where we have aircraft come down for maintenance, for any repairs or any anything regarding maintenance for the aircraft. They'll come down from this elevator right here, the port side elevator, and then all the way in the back is we have the we have the starboard aircraft elevator, and those elevators will bring down the aircraft from the flight deck down to here, and the hangar bay crew down here will. We'll move the aircraft from the, from the elevator to the hangar bay. We also have the raft station over here. So whenever we do the plan for at sea, all the supplies, all the fuel, everything that we get, all our necessary, necessary supplies will be all conjugated here in the hangar bay. It'll be all hands effort to quickly and efficiently put them in the right compartments, right storage areas. And follow me and show you the flight deck. So this is the flight deck. Our flight deck is about 844 feet long. So we can carry up to about 30 plus aircraft, whether it be search and rescue helos like the 60 over here, the Cobra and the Huey. We also carry jets. And the only two jets that we carry are the F-35, the AV Harrier. Whenever we park aircraft on the flight deck, they will always be here on the forward or back aft. And then whenever we launch aircraft with the helos, they either hover and take off, and they would hover and land. And with the jets, they would, on this yellow line right here, the tramway, that's where they would launch and recover from us. Now, on normal fly day, it's just like on an aircraft carrier where it will be an orchestra of moving parts, moving aircraft, and also launching recovery. And for the most part, we're not as big as a carrier, but we can act and operate just like a carrier. The only difference is, as you can see, we have no catapults. It's just flight deck. I'd like to thank you for taking this time to see our flight deck. Hope you enjoyed your tour. See you next time.